As part of the overhaul of the Packaging Recyclability Evaluation Portal for PREP 5.0, there are several exciting and important new features that we'll walk through in this video. At the top of the page, you can see the usual six tabs – Home, My Projects, My Account, Support, About and Logout. Under the My Projects tab, we now have four pages – Current Projects, Archived Projects and the new Dashboard and Product Categories pages. New features in the Current Projects page include the new Notifications tab to the right, represented by the bell icon. Here, notifications on any content or data update will be stored until they are read. You can also search for current and archived projects by clicking the grey search box and typing a search term. You also now have the ability to sort each column by clicking on its title, changing the order from ascending to descending. Within Archived Projects, we can again search and sort these projects. One of the most important things is to remember to keep the current and archived projects pages as up-to-date as possible, as these feed into the new Dashboard page. The Dashboard now summarises the percentage of components assessed within PREP as recyclable, recyclable with loss value, conditionally recyclable and not recyclable. We can also compare these percentages across nominated product categories, allowing us to target categories which are problematic to recycle through innovation and design. One user within an organisation will have the ability to nominate relevant categories within the Product Categories page. This list will continue to expand, so if we add a category, for example Dairy, when we hit Save, the list continues to grow. Within the projects themselves, we have also made some exciting updates, including the integration of the ARL. Within the Overview page, we can select the product category which the project relates to. For the separable items, we now have to select the material type and select the corresponding item name, which is crucial for the generation of the ARL artwork. In this example, we have a plastic tub and a lid. As we move on to the Items page, we can see the full details of the materials of each item. Here we can see we have a polypropylene tub with a label. As the lid is not recyclable unless it is attached to the tub, we have also selected the combined disposal with details entered for the lid as a secondary material to the tub. As we move on to the Draft Report page, we can see the ARL artwork is already generated, telling us if each item can be recycled. In this example, we can see the tub is recyclable with loss value and the lid is not recyclable. However, when combined, the lid is conditionally recyclable with loss value. It's important to run this test as we want to check whether any item which would not be recyclable on its own could be recyclable when combined. In this case, the answer is yes. The lid is recyclable with loss value when combined with the tub. So we want to ensure the ARL instructs people to follow the conditionally recyclable instructions so the lid can be recovered. To ensure the ARL displays correctly, we need to move to the Modify Report for ARL page. Once here, we can see labels displayed for the tub, lid and combined disposal. We can click the boxes to remove the ARLs not required for the final report. As the combined disposal result is present here for testing only, we do not want it to display on the final report. Instead, we will modify the ARL by self-nominating as conditionally recyclable for items classified as non-recyclable in the draft report, by clicking here. Once on this page, we can see the lid is originally not recyclable, but as the test has proved, it can be recycled provided consumers follow the instructions. We will use the drop-down menus to nominate it as conditionally recyclable provided the lid is attached to the tub. We will do this for both Australia and New Zealand. Once we click Apply, we can see the artwork has been updated, with the lid label now displaying the conditionally recyclable logo and the instructions to follow. This data will also feed through to the dashboard. Now, as we go to the final report page, we can see the final ARL showing the tub is recyclable with loss value and the lid is conditionally recyclable, while the combined disposal label is no longer there. As we scroll down, we can see the full information for each section. Now we save the report and enter the name we wish to choose. For example, polypropylene, tub and lid version 2. We are then taken to the Saved Reports tab, showing each of the reports we have created for this item. 
On this page we can view, download or delete each report. Importantly, when we have multiple reports in this page, we can also select the final version, which ensures the correct design specifications are pulled through as data points to the dashboard. To make it easier for organisations that are RedCycle partners in Australia, we've also included the RedCycle assessment thresholds within PREP. Working through this example, we can see that it is a soft plastics bag in the frozen foods product category. The material is plastic and the item name is bag. Moving on to the next page, we can see that it does not contain hazardous contents and its primary material is LDPE. In the rigidity section, if we had selected rigid, a number of questions below would appear. If we select soft as a red cycle partner, a table now appears. If not a red cycle partner, this table would not appear. In this table we can see our primary polymer is LDPE with a gauge thickness of 100 microns and we have a secondary material of HDPE with a gauge thickness of 70 microns. Clicking into our draft ARL report, as the soft plastic meets the thresholds to be accepted through the RedCycle program, it automatically appears as the transparent conditionally recyclable ARL. As there is no collection system for soft plastics in New Zealand, it is not recyclable and the bin icon appears. We can then click into the Modify ARL page. There, we click on the pencil icon and select the consumer instructions for this soft plastic item. In this case, Store Drop-Off. Once we click Apply, the consumer instructions appear on the label. As we head into the final report page, we are now able to save the report and choose a name. As the most recently saved report, it automatically appears as the final design. We can also duplicate the project, which opens a new project titled Copy and will include all entered data. This concludes this tutorial video. For further information on PrEP and the ARL, please visit www.packagingcovenant.org.au.